from the College by the Lake, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Local, regional, national, and international guests discussing the issues and topics affecting the way you live are on Forum, the North Idaho College Public Forum, with your host and moderator, political scientist, Tony Stewart. I'm very pleased to welcome you to our program again this week, and our subject is going to be economic trends and development. We're particularly emphasizing what's happening here in the Inland Empire and in Idaho and, and the Northwest. And I could not be more pleased than to have the guest we have today who is so qualified to discuss this important topic. I welcome the program, Bob Potter, who is the CEO and president of an organization called Jobs Plus Incorporated. Mr. Potter spent uh, 35 years with AT&T. He has many, many years experience in dealing with economic issues and we've had him on our program before and we're very happy to have him back. And Bob, thank you for coming and being with us. I know you're always busy and it's been too long since we had you here and, and we look forward to today's interview. Thanks, Tony and Janelle. It's good being with you. And as always, I'm pleased to have our regular panelist, Janelle Burke, who is an attorney in the state of Idaho. And Janelle shall commence our questioning today with our guest, Bob Potter. Bob, would you be so kind as to explain to our viewers what Jobs Plus is? Although many of us know that, sure. uh, perhaps there are some out there who don't. Uh, Janelle, I'll make it, uh, I'll, I'll cover that quickly. Uh, Jobs Plus was formed about 10 years ago, uh, mainly because the economy here, it, and, and if you were here, and Tony, you know, it was a very difficult economy. Our mining industry was down, and our forest products industry was down, and so, the same issues over in, in, in Spokane. The whole region really suffered, and our young men and women that would graduate from this school, NIC, or the University of Idaho, or our high schools for that matter, would have to end up in places like Los Angeles or San Francisco or the coast uh, in order to get a decent job and earn a living. And so uh, some of our community leaders uh, raised a million dollars about 10 years ago for, to fund a four-year program. We were able to extend that to five years and uh, the program's been re renewed now about three times. I, I started out as a four-year job and I think I'll soon be on my 10th year. It's the second career year. But, but it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Tell us what's happened recently with regard to jobs. Plus. Well, we had a fairly good year last year. Um, we recruited uh, our 1996 results. We recruited eight companies. Uh, they were small, um, mainly small, a total of 351 jobs. And we only count the jobs we actually, the companies hire. We don't take that scenario that one job creates a job. We only count what we do. So we had 351 jobs and uh, about six million and uh, about six million five in, in new capital dollars invested here with those companies. Our results to date though, we've got 50 companies total, um, 1,842 jobs at our last count, and again at the end of every year we call the companies or sit down with the companies that we've recruited and we go over the jobs they have currently and we go over their payroll. So we've got about 18, we're almost at 1,900 jobs, about 43 million in new payroll of the Jobs Plus companies in the county and 109, almost $110 million in new capital investments from the Jobs Plus companies. Now, of course, a company like Harper's sure helps my number there, but, uh, and, a, and about a million, almost a million, uh, 300,000 square feet of occupancy. Again, Harper's helps me a lot because that's about 475,000. So most of the companies we've recruited are small. The, the thing that, we were talking about earlier that's very important in my opinion is we're not just trying to recruit my board doesn't want me to recruit just 351 jobs the 351 jobs have to pay more and 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 and, it, and uh, quite a bit more than the average annual wage in Kootenai County uh, to give you an example uh, we're running about $23,273 average annual wage with a Jobs Plus job. The county is averaging $20,331 the last count I had. Now, of course, every time we're also beefing up that $20,000, so we're competing with ourselves here. But that's the main thing we're proud of. We're not here to, I can recruit companies that pay minimum wage jobs, but that's not what we're about. 
When you go out to recruit, what processes do you use? What do you tell them is good about coming to our part of the country? Well, it's a really a business case approach, Janelle, because companies, uh, there are a lot of things. Smaller companies really want uh, to improve uh, possibly their quality of life. If they're a small company and they're operating in the San Fernando Valley or uh, in Orange County or out in Riverside down in Southern California, they're probably interested in a better quality of life. And if it's a family-owned company, maybe their grandkids and the kid, sons working with the company. Or if it's a larger company, they'd like to uh, uh, be able to attract employees and be in a part of the company where they could recruit better. It's also, though, the issue of the other side of the scale. No one just moves a company for that. You've got to build a business case that says we can reduce your expense stream in Idaho versus Orange County or in Seattle. And so um, uh, we take that approach. We kind of do a little business case approach with each company. That gets our foot in the door. Bob, there's a, so much discussion all around the country about large companies and small companies and a lot of the large corporations, uh, their overheads become great and there's mm -hmm. a lot of downsizing sure. going on. And, and we are become more of a service industry with a lot of minimum wage jobs. Mm -hmm. How would you respond to the experience you're having about what you see as the future about uh, creating so many minimum wage jobs? Or well, can, we, can we create more middle management jobs? Sure. And so forth? I, I've noticed um, in my old company, AT&T, uh, large companies are farming out some of their uh, back office service, um, customer service jobs. That's why you see so many new telemarketing companies form. Salt Lake City must be the center of the world in back office telemarketing, uh, both inbound telemarketing, outbound telemarketing jobs. They must be the headquarters of the world because a lot of them are there. There's an AT&T unit there, uh, uh, some major companies that handle service jobs for, for large corporations. Um, and that has been a booming industry. I get contacts all the time about that. Uh, they, they, it's a tough one to handle because they require a lot of people, and um, I feel we can certainly uh, f we can have one or two and fit in nicely because we can fit it in, and there are job opportunities. They're very flexible in their hours worked. It's a second. It's a great second job opportunity, especially if they have good benefits. But you certainly don't want to have a community that's just uh, that's your main strategy. Uh, I. Salt Lake had a main strategy of recruiting companies like that. They have a 2% unemployment rate, and they have a lot of lower pay jobs. Uh, we have, I think, a good example of one here that I think is, fits in beautifully. We were able to get Coldwater Creek to put their uh, inbound call, catalog call center here, and they'll have about 200 plus employees here shortly. They have an excellent benefit program, fits in nicely, very flexible with the hours, uh, and they're an Idaho company. So that's an example of we really needed one. So you, you, your organization is very cautious and, and you're being selective, worrying about how this is all going to fit into the system. Uh, there's an announcement that the University of Idaho, in, in, yeah. in cooperation with North Idaho College and some other institutions, believe Washington State University, is looking at uh, Riverbend Industrial Research Center in uh, our county in Post Falls. I'd like you to uh, address that question, but also in the same um, question. I would suggest that there are these other centers around the country and how are they sure. doing and what is the role between college universities and business in developing the economy? I'm glad you asked that question because I did bring along the, the internal plan that Dr. Hoover's staff put together and I had a chance to participate and Dr. in Dr. Hoover's the president of the University new, of Idaho. Pre new president of the University of Idaho. And I, had, and I was included in his, I'm included in his uh, planning team and part of his team. It's an excellent thing for us and it's, it, um, uh, first of all, it would bring the University of Idaho to our area with at least two advanced degree programs, probably mechanical and electrical engineering. Now, if the University of Idaho's research park can bring that value to the research park in a center, not just worry about brick and mortar, but bring that, that uh, advanced degree program to the center so that if I recruit a company that has uh, some research in electronics, they'll be, able to enter, they'll be able to go down the road a ways or in the next building and sit down to talk to one of the advanced degree engineers uh, or one of our PhDs in the, in the School of Engineering and start to communicate and solve some problems. 
So if the university can bring that value, not just brick and mortar, to the scene, it'll slowly start to grow. It's a long-term project. Uh, these research parks take 15 or 20 years to, to really complete. So you don't do anything overnight. Uh, on the other side of that, uh, what'll make ours different is that we've got North Idaho College now participating in it so that we not, we're not just focused on advanced degree programs, but we've got our workforce training center out there, the NIC Workforce Training Center, which is a retraining effort of, of people that are not pursuing a four-year degree, uh, haven't even, you know, they're, they're simply being retrained or trained in a new field for a company. But that can also interface with the university and with the NIC's Vocational Technical Center, which in my vision, will be out there someday. Mm -hmm. So we create a complete system of companies that can have a workforce training center, that can draw on a vocational training program, that can interface with some heavier research over here. And what I admire about Dr. Hoover, he's not just focused on people pursuing a four-year degree in this concept, because three out of four of our young men and women that leave our high schools are not going to pursue a four-year degree, and we desperately need to put this system together, and it's a real competitive advantage. And another issue here is, too, as when we talk about downsizing and what's happening in the country and the change in our whole economy, sure. retraining is going to be exactly. more there for many, many yeah. workers. Dr. Ketchum can talk to you for about four hours on that subject. Mm -hmm. And so that's just something that we face that uh, you, you don't get, even yep. if you get a degree, you don't spend the rest of your life exactly. without any more training. This, uh, but having a company in the middle of this environment is a real competitive advantage. Now, the parks that I have uh, looked at or have read about do, didn't bring this vocational training, workforce training. They just brought research. And we've, we even need to extend this into our high schools with a technical prep program so that our young men and women that aren't going to pursue a degree would have a really first-class vocational system here to get some really good jobs. Thank you. Janelle Berg. Well, we've just been talking about one of the trends of the future, mm -hmm. uh, but can you tell us what really is the state of the economy in this area of the country, and then what are some of the trends that mm -hmm. you see? Yeah. Well, I, I can, uh, I feel that 90, 1997, I think, is going to be a, a, a more difficult year for us here in, uh, in the region, in Spokane and, and Coeur d'Alene. Um, I can tell you in the work that I do, it's very, very competitive. Um, our objective next year is to close six companies and create, I think it's uh, 300 jobs. It'd uh, be very difficult to close one every other month. I, uh, I think I can do the six companies, but will I get to 300 jobs? I don't know. I think we're going to see a, a slowdown. I think, uh, I think we're seeing it right now in tourism. Um, I think that we're seeing it and we will s probably be hit here in the construction side because some of our large construction projects are tailing off and I don't see too many big ones that are going to go into the ground in 1997. So I, I think we're going to have a more difficult year. Will it be a really bad year? Well, probably not, but it won't be like we've been we've been used to. Now, what are some of the trends for the future, do you think, in terms of workforces and what kinds of things do you think people are going to be doing? Home offices, perhaps, are one of them. We've, um, we, we, in the uh, business, they're referred to as lone eagles, and I th we have m more here than we really know. It's hard to, you just don't know how many we have, but every now and then one will come in, a gentleman or a lady will come into my office and tell me about this operation that they have going and especially with the internet now and um, uh, we'll see more of that. There are a lot of people that are earning a living out of their homes and can leave places where they just don't want to live and they can live anywhere they want to live. I think we'll see a lot more of that. Um, I, um, uh, I think that um, uh, having access to the uh, system that I described out at the research park is going to help us uh, long range in our economy here because we'll be able to attract companies that will really understand this as a that, that it's a uh, vital to their uh, future to have be in that environment um, but I think retraining workers will be a problem for industry now uh, as technology changes Bob there's something that 
it ties into what you're saying. Before the program started, we were talking about uh, what you just mentioned, about what the future may mm -hmm. be of the economy here in the near future. Uh, and you, in that discussion, pointed out that also that you and others have concern about some bad publicity that the undeserved, yes. I should say. It's unfortunate. It's uh, unfortunate, but uh, how is that going to impact? We're coming full circle in, in my history with Jobs Plus because when I first took the job, you and uh, Bill, uh, at the time Father Bill, in my church, you were leaders in the uh, Human Rights Coalition, which I was very proud of here when we first, that was 10 years ago or more. But we're back full circle in this thing. As I get around the country and talk to companies, and I was down in L.A. last week, it's not funny anymore. It's not a joke. People are very serious about the publicity we've been getting um, uh, with the, uh, especially uh, recently in Spokane and uh, the bank, the robberies and the, and the uh, 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 situation there. And if that links to the Olympics, which there's some thought that it might, um, situation, we're going to have some real bad publicity, which will, Janelle, I think, hurt our economy here. Not just here, but in Spokane. We're all lumped together in this. And it's really sad because, mo as you know, the vast majority of citizens in North Idaho are people that would be part of a human rights coalition. We know that. And it's really a, a shame. But we're going to have to get focused on that again because I see, I see some serious trouble downstream, which will hurt us. So what you're indicating is, and, I, and I've seen that rhetoric too, that the great majority of our people are very supportive of human rights, but it just takes a small group to create bad publicity exactly. for regions. Exactly. And that's where we were. Well, there was, I think you had a little more, you had, uh, uh, you know, the same thing happened to you when you people formed this originally, when I first came to North Idaho. I think we've got to take a, We've got to take a, another shot at up, uh, stimulating that interest to get everybody alert to that because it is a serious issue here. Do you think that there should be, uh, once again, more emphasis to say that uh, uh, in a very public voice that we do reject hate? And well, I think absolutely, I, absolutely. Not just here, but in Spokane, yeah. in, in the inland northwest. Mm -hmm. Janelle Berg. One of the areas that seems to be very popular is the retirement mm -hmm. issue. Um, how does that play into what Jobs Plus does, or does it at all? We're highly focused. I, I don't, uh, every now and then I will work with a company that's, that's here that it's a possibility we may lose that company. And if the company, if there's a way that I can help solve that problem, I will. I'm working on one right now. Uh, but I'm highly focused because we're, I'm, you talk about being the corporate leader here, it's Karen Cook and Bob Potter here. So. So being president of Jobs Plus, is, you're also the chief salesman and proposal maker and everything else. So we're highly focused. We can only really do one thing, and that is recruit small and medium-sized companies that operate in a high-cost area, try to, uh, companies that are financially sound, and try to create that relocation so we can create some jobs. That's basically the focus. So I don't get involved in, in uh, recruiting people. I'm not into population growth. We're into economic growth. Okay, don't want to touch population growth. Now that we've That's mentioned up to the that. realtors and the <laughs> Chamber of Commerce and people like that. But now that we've mentioned that, are we prepared for the growth that a program like Jobs Plus Good question, might bring? Janelle. Um, um, we're just like when I started this program, our high, I don't believe we were even certified in the Coeur High School back then. Remember? And I don't know about Post Falls or, or Lakeland, but we had a serious high school. We had a serious school problem. And we worked our way through that because I s always state in something I've learned always, don't overrun your headlights and don't, don't get out in front of the infrastructure. Now I'm, I'm worried about Post Falls because um, the high school is crowded, we, they didn't pass the bond levies and um, we got to watch that. Um, and if, if we can't solve that, if we can't keep our infrastructure up, our wa wastewater systems, our our, our uh, roads and our planning on, uh, on our uh, sewer treatment plants, and we can't keep pace with all that, then we just have to cut back on what we're recruiting. We, we can't have everything. We've got to keep the infrastructure solid. Now, basically, we're in pretty good shape. We have some cracks in the armor at the Post Falls School District. We've got to pass those bond levies. That's tough because also on the other side of the levee, 
property taxes are way up there here. We're not a bargain on property taxes. A lot of hard work went in driving that down last year, if you recall, and the cities and the, and the taxing districts did a good job, in my opinion, because we were as high as 2.5% of assessed value in Post Falls, and we were no bargain in other parts of the county. We've got that down now to where it's about 1.7 or 1.8 still high, and I can understand why people are reluctant to spend more money on, on a school levy. But we've, we just have to keep pace, or, or, or it's very difficult. People do not want to relocate to a place where they aren't keeping pace with their infrastructure and their school systems. First question small companies ask. So it's very tied to education and other parts of the infrastructure. Exactly. And, and they have options where they can go. And so Ex you're, exactly. you're, you're competing against other communities. Exactly. And the first question a small company will ask, because they're, they're, they've got some kids that are going to be involved. Tell me about the school systems. I want to know exactly about every one of them. Bob, another thing is that, uh, taking advantage of your expertise, there's a lot of discussion around the country by the technical experts in and out of government that indicate you know, we're in the information highway system mm -hmm. and people can live in small communities and still communicate all over the world uh, with the technical information they have. As you discuss this with different corporate heads and all, where do you think we're headed uh, with this information age? And, and uh, <laughs> what I hear uh, recently is that there are a lot of jobs that are going to be created in the next 10 years that don't exist now. That's exactly right. I, I, re I mentioned Dr. Ketchum a little earlier, but he, um, he can describe this in great detail. And uh, the the jobs that that uh, uh, won't be here in the next decade, and it is frightening. Uh, that's why uh, having a workforce training center and a vocational training center in a college like this is critical. Um, and that's that's we're seeing it now. I I, I I see that happening now in the next ten years. That's certainly going to accelerate. Um, we're fortunate here in Kootenai County. As far as telecommunications infrastructure, we're quite strong. Uh, GTE has pretty much invested a whole new system here. So uh, um, from an AT&T guy point of view, I can give a real plug to GT&E. They have worked hard on super good infrastructure in our county. Uh, and it's all new, it's all fiber, it's all digital, it's all uh, uh, self-healing networks, uh, state-of-the-art switching and uh, they invested all brand new. So we're in a good spot to start to deliver some of the more uh, exotic services related to uh, telecommunications and the internet. And also with the Congress and the President signing legislation for deregulation both in the telecommunications and in the utilities, that, that's going to create well, a lot of decisions the, more at the local level. With the deregulation of uh, the power industry and further deregulation of the telecommunications industry, I don't think we'll be able to have dinner without a phone call trying to solicit <laughs> the account. But um, uh, you, you'll have the AT&Ts and the Sprints and the MCIs are all going to try to capture local markets. They can get into local telephone business now and the GTEs that have, and the companies that haven't been in the long distance market are going to try and invade that market. And the power industry is going to deregulate and um, um, who knows where that'll lead. So I hear you saying in addition to having to be more technically trained for a job yourself, as a consumer you're going to need to know more to make your decision? I guess. Uh, <laughs> sure, you will be. I, don't, I just want to have dinner without a telemarketing call. <laughs> uh, Janelle Berg. It seems to me that one of the things that's most important about the work that you're doing is the opportunities that you are really cultivating for our young people in the inland northwest. That's one of the things that has happened. It's been very difficult for them unless their parents were professionals or they had a company or something. Absolutely. Very difficult for them Janelle, to find work. Janelle, that's a really good point. Um, the thing about Jobs Plus is that I hear, people will sometimes say, well, we're doing really well here. Do you, we, we need it anymore. We still haven't solved that problem. If you're a young lady or a young man, you're moving here and you want to live here, and you've had a middle management job somewhere in the East Coast or the West Coast, uh, the chances of finding a middle management job here that would support you are just, uh, just extremely difficult. And um, uh, we still haven't solved that problem in Spokane or here. Uh, if you have uh, a daughter that has an MBA 
you try to find a job here for that is that would be equal to that MBA or a degree of any sort and the jobs just that we still have to work at that we still don't have enough good quality jobs for our young men and women and that's what you're doing with jobs plus we try uh, we try to do that we're not in the business again of recruiting companies that, to bring people we don't want them to bring people we want to have the jobs created here we're not into this population growth at all sometimes I get blamed for the crowded roads well the jobs plus companies I think uh, of the 1800 almost 1900 jobs I think only about 13 14 percent of them are people that moved here so we're, we don't want to get involved in that we've got to create jobs here not bring them in that's a really a powerful statistic you give, and that's really helpful. Uh, let's move back again to a moment to about the infrastructure uh, as, as one does have mm -hmm. some new industry. Um, in addition to education that you mentioned, what else are the companies looking for in the area other than a good educational system? Well, they, uh, they're obviously looking for quality employees uh, and a workforce that makes sense, that, that would be loyal and, and uh, have a good work ethic. We also have to keep the state's tax structure in line. Where the state of Idaho historically is pretty well balanced, um, you can predict the state of Idaho that it'll be fairly, you know, fairly uh, conservative in its management of its uh, revenues. Um, no matter who's the governor, you'll find uh, everybody's focused on keeping the budget in line, so you don't have these tremendous shifts in the budgets and the fundings like you do stay in the state of Washington. So you can predict Idaho. That's very important to a company, to be able to say, I'm going to go to a state where I can pretty well figure out for the next 25 years, they're not going to have a lot of glit glitches. The road may have a, they may have bad roads, but they're still going to have, they won't be out of line on their workman's comp and their unemployment insurance and debt. And, that sort of thing. I received word we're out of time from our staff, but on behalf of Janelle Burke and our staff, Bob Potter, the CEO uh, of Jobs Plus, we thank you. It's most informative. It's good being with you both. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you found this program most informative, and I would invite you to be with us again next week at the same time when we will discuss yet another issue. Until then, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. The North Idaho College Public Forum was videotaped live from the studios of instructional technology on the campus of North Idaho College for viewing at this more appropriate time. We invite you to join us again next week for another all-new edition of the North Idaho College Public Forum on this public television station.